Hungry for breakfast? again at the table and today we're going to be talking about rethinking your sweets and we're following along continuing with our med instead of meds program and going med and today this is our very last session of going med so we've talked about uh, changing up your protein swapping your fats consuming more nuts and seeds uh, whole grains and then rethinking your sweets which is really focused on sugar so we've got two different recipes today. They are both focused on breakfast. So a lot of times thinking about our breakfast meals, we might have a sugary cereal, we might have muffins that are loaded with sugar. Um, so it's kind of hard for us to have an, a healthier option at breakfast. So we're gonna be making banana oatmeal pancakes, and then we're also gonna be making a banana nut muffin. So we'll start off with those pancakes. I do have one banana in my bowl already. Looks a little mushy and gross, that's because it was frozen. So what I like to do is I like to take a banana that is much blacker than this, that has all those black spots and is very, very, very ripe. And I'll throw that into a freezer bag. I'll peel it first, throw it into a freezer bag and freeze it. And this is one of those recipes that's really great for utilizing those leftover bananas that have gone way too ripe. Personally, I like them a little bit more green whenever I eat them plain. So once they get to a certain ripeness, I go ahead and throw them in a freezer bag. So I've used one of those because it's gonna be extra sweet. That natural sugar uh, kind of intensifies as it gets more ripe. So I've used one very, very ripe banana and then I've got a not so ripe banana. This is kind of halfway there. Another day or two would probably be perfect, but it's still got some green on the ends, which tells you that it's, it's not quite as ripe as we want. So that really ripe banana will help to bring out some of the sweetness. And you just want to mash this together. And you can do this with a fork. You can grab like a potato masher, um, anything that will help you to mash this up really well. One thing I'll mention, if you're using those bananas that were frozen, I always throw it into a uh, container that is microwave safe and go ahead and microwave heat it up, which is what I have done with this already. You will start to have some water from it being frozen, any kind of you know, crystallization that happened, um, those ice crystals that might have happened from the water might form. So it will be a little bit more watery and runny I go ahead and I like to drain my banana. So I'll heat it, cook it for about a minute until it's nice and cooked through, it's heated, it's not gonna be hard and frozen anymore. And then I'll put it into a, a strainer and just get some of that water out. So we've got our bananas. Next, we are gonna add some eggs. So we've got two eggs here and I'm just gonna crack those. One trick for cracking eggs is that we always hear, oh, you need to bang it on the side of the bowl. That's not true. So that's actually gonna dig some of the shell into it and you could potentially have egg that comes out. It's better to crack on a flat surface. So you could either crack on the counter or you could crack it in the side of the bowl. Every time I try to crack it on the side of the bowl, I make a mess. So I like to go for the counter option. Remember eggs are raw, so if you are Handling those, make sure you wash your hands afterwards. I'm gonna wash my hands after we get some of this stuff going. So you just wanna uh, scramble those up, throw it in with your banana. And then we've got a couple other ingredients. We've got oats. So we're just using old fashioned oats here. Um, I just thought, you know, whatever brand is fine. And these are gluten free. So part of our production team has a family member who uh, actually has celiac disease. So we were just talking about how both of these recipes today are gluten-free by using these oats. 
And that's just half a cup of those. And then we're gonna add half a teaspoon of baking powder. And where is my baking powder? Mix that in there. And we're gonna add our cinnamon. We've got one eighth of a teaspoon of that, so I'm actually just gonna sprinkle that over, kinda eyeball it until it's got some nice color from the cinnamon that you're throwing in. And our last thing is gonna be vanilla extract. So we need a quarter of a teaspoon of vanilla extract, so this is a half of a teaspoon, so I'm just gonna do half of the half. That was a little much. That's all right. Throw that in, and then you just mix it up. So you've got your bananas. We're not adding any sugar to this. So these are pancakes, which is crazy, but these are um, gonna have naturally sweet flavor just from those bananas. So now that we've got that nice and mixed up, we're gonna take a quick break and we'll head over to the stovetop and cook these up. You're out for an evening on the town. Finally a chance to relax and forget that you left your front door completely unlocked. Fortunately, you just installed a security system from Star Communications. With just your cell phone, you can check on your house, lock it down, light it up, and get back to relaxing. You forgot to put Buster in his crate. Unfortunately, we can't help with that. Security and automation from Star Communications. Call today to find out more. All right, so back to our pancakes. We do have all of our mixture mixed nicely together. We're gonna add just a little bit of oil to this pan. Now you don't want a ton. You want about half a teaspoon. Y'all know me, I like to eyeball it. So I'm just gonna get a little bit in there to where it's coated nicely. You could absolutely do this in a griddle um, if that's easier. Done that before for programs. And we just, my pan is nice and hot. I've actually had it on the heat for a little bit just to get it warmed up for you guys. And um, I went ahead, we're gonna wait a little bit for the oil to, to heat up as well. We're only gonna use about a quarter of a cup per pancake and you should get about six pancakes out of this. So if you look at our recipe online on medinsetameds.com, it, this makes two servings. So a serving would be three pancakes. Sometimes I get a little bit more than, than six pancakes out of it. Just depends on how big you make them. So we're gonna use my little measure here so that I can try to get the right amount for y'all and throw these into our pan. And they smell so good already. You can smell the banana. So um, it, that tells you it's gonna be a little bit sweeter because you smell the sweetness of the banana in the pancakes. Looks like we'll get just exactly six here. And you don't want them to touch, just like you would regular pancakes. You want them to uh, be nicely arranged. Let's see if I can make a little pile here for our last one. Perfect. All right, we'll let that cook just a little bit, about four minutes on each side. And you wanna wait, just like, like your traditional pancakes, they start to get cooked on the outside. You might see those little bitty bubbles along the outside that gives you that uh, signifier that, hey, it's time to flip those. So we're gonna let those cook just a little bit. We're actually gonna top these with just fresh fruit. So we have a berry mixture here from uh, the frozen section of Food Lion, and you just buy that frozen, any type of frozen fruit, it's kind of what I go to. You could use fresh, fresh fruit. A lot of fresh berries are in season right now. Um, so absolutely, you can go that route. I go for the frozen, and I heat it in the microwave for about two minutes, um, checking on it, of course, throughout. You do have, if you have berries, you might have blueberries in there. Those could explode if they're not very well frozen. So just keep that in mind, check on your, your berries but I just love a berry mixture like this because and using that frozen because you see that you kind of have some of that juice and that's kind of like a syrup for you 
So you don't have to add syrup to this because you've kind of got a, a berry fruit syrup already and then you've got the sweetness from your berries. Um, you could absolutely do a sugar-free syrup as well if you prefer to go that route or you could use maple syrup and cut back, don't use quite as much. So just be mindful of that. The reason why we don't wanna consume so much sugar is it really affects our whole entire body. It really affects our health. So it affects our gut, it affects our heart, it contributes to heart disease, it contributes to non-fatty liver disease, um, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, it contributes to gout, uh, it causes inflammation in the body. So we see a lot of things that start to happen when we consume an excess amount of sugar in our diet. And sugar is hidden in so many things. So you just wanna be mindful of that. Peanut butter has sugar. It's not an, a, a really great amount of sugar in there. Bread sometimes has sugar in it. Um, your pasta sauces have sugar. So things that you don't naturally think of being a sweet food can still have sugar in it. So that contributes every day to your overall sugar consumption that you should be having. And we wanna have around 24 to 36 grams of sugar. So to break that down into teaspoons, that's about six to nine teaspoons. A lot of things are written in grams. So if you're reading a, a package, a label, check that and see how many grams of sugar is in the package. Um, so 24 would be for women and children, 36 is for men. So just be mindful of that as you're watching your sugar in different foods. So these are almost ready to flip. We're gonna give them just another minute and we'll join you right back. Sweetie, will you turn that down, please? Keep life exciting, even when it's not. Watch TV everywhere from Star Communications. All right, so our pancakes have been cooking for about four minutes, and you can actually start to see some of the bubbles in the top here, and that's kind of telling you, hey, it's time to flip me. So we are gonna, since I did that middle pancake last, I'm gonna do that one last. I'm just gonna work my way around. Again, we should have enough oil in that pan for it to be okay as far as um, sticking. I'm at a weird angle here, so let me readjust. But you can see how that's got, just got a nice brown to it. And a great thing about these pancakes too is that you can freeze them. So um, I will make a big batch, well, I'll make an entire batch of these. And if I'm the only one eating them at home, or maybe I'll double the batch. I'll, I'll um, freeze these, let them cool first, and then put them in a freezer bag and freeze them in sets of, of two or three. And you can actually throw them in your toaster and heat them up that way. So just like an Eggo waffle or something like that, um, you need something quick and on the go. This is a great thing that you can make ahead of time. So while that is cooking, we only want that to be cooking for another four minutes or so. We are going to Go ahead and move over to our bananas, um, our banana nut muffins. Sorry, we are using lots of bananas today. Same concept here, I used a frozen banana, heated it, drained it, all of that, it's very ripe. Again, I have a not so uh, ripe banana. You can see the green on the top and bottom. That signifies it's not quite as ripe, um, but the other banana will help still give us that sweetness. Another trick that I have learned in my time in cooking with um, with the public that you can actually heat bake bananas so you can if you have one that's not quite as ripe because I'm one of those last minute people that shop right when I need to shop um, I tend to I've, I'll buy something and they won't have any really ripe bananas in the store so I have actually baked a banana before that's more green and you bake it in the oven, I don't know, I wanna say like 20 minutes, and it will help to ripen that banana faster. So if you have a situation where you need to make something and you don't have any ripe bananas, you have no access to them, then you can bake them in the oven, make them ripe. 
Oop. So you're just wanting to mash these up really nicely. And we then we are going to move on to our apples. So we've got our bananas mashed up. We'll set this to the side. Actually, we're gonna add the apples to this, I'm sorry. So moving that, um, we're gonna add our apples in. So I just took a uh, food processor and went ahead and chopped these up that way. You can absolutely chop them yourself, but you need about one and a half apples. And I have some apples here for you to see. Um, they're just smaller apples. So the one and a half cups, I'm sorry, will equal about two small apples. So throw those into your mixture. So lots of fruit in this dish, which is really what helps to give it that natural sweet taste. And then we are going to add our egg. This is two eggs uh, whisked up. You could use egg whites if you, if you choose. You just might have to double up your egg whites so that you have enough liquid uh, to equal out all of that. And then we are going to add, I'm gonna continue mixing this a little bit more, and then we're going to add our nuts in. Now you only need a cup of nuts and you can choose whatever nuts you prefer. Um, I thought pecans sounded really good in with apples, um, pecans, pecans, however you say it. We say pecans where I'm from. And you just wanna mix that up really well. Walnuts I think would be really good in this, uh, chopped almonds. You just wanna make sure that whatever nuts you're using are chopped up, that way you get a little, you don't get a big chunk of almond or, or of a, any nut, whatever you're using in a, in a muffin. So that is our wet mixture. So we're actually going to set this aside, move on to our dry mixture, but first I think our, our pancakes are done. So we'll be right back and we'll pull these pancakes off and finish up our muffins. After completing my contract, I still have to buy out of it? Come on, here's your sign. Switch to the sign that's keeping homes secure and customers happy all over the area. Security from Star Communications. We pride ourselves on fair pricing and quick, friendly service every time. Somebody try to break into this place? Security from Star Communications. So we've got our pancakes here. We have pulled them off of the stove and they look so good. They're nice and brown and they just, they smell delicious. So we're gonna set these to the side for now. Um, but remember, you can always store those for later, put them in a freezer bag and you can have them for a quick meal later. So we're gonna transition to our banana nut muffins and we're gonna start working on our dry ingredients. We've already got our wet ingredients into the bowl here. So we're gonna switch to dry. And the first thing we need is more old fashioned oats. So we need a cup of these. And we need some cinnamon. So a whole teaspoon of cinnamon. A lot of our breakfast recipes, we think about a lot of things we eat for breakfast are sweet, unless you're eating things in the in the meat family for breakfast, like your sausage and bacon and eggs, are usually not as sweet, but those things also have a lot of saturated fat, and so we wanna keep, be mindful of those things that we're eating um, and try to choose healthier options for breakfast. So we've got baking powder, and this is gonna be two teaspoons. So I like to use that side, I don't know if you knew this, but the side of the baking powder is a way for you to scrape that off and really level it. And then we need a teaspoon of baking soda. This will help them to rise. Uh, they don't rise a whole, whole lot um, because thinking about the flour, you know, we're not using um, flour in this, we're just using oats. So the, the baking powder will help with that some, but they're not gonna rise a, a really great amount either. And then our last ingredient is salt, and we're just gonna do half a teaspoon of salt. 
Now, realize I didn't put any sugar in our dry ingredients, so these are all really good, healthy ingredients. Whole foods here, they're gonna be better for us. And when we're thinking about sugar, um, there are tons of different types of sugar. So what we always say, sugar is sugar is sugar is sugar is sugar is sugar is sugar. No matter how many ways you say it, it's still sugar. So whether you call it honey, whether you call it um, fructose, whether you call it, there's millions of different names, syrup, um, that's all sugar. It still metabolizes in your body the same. So just keep that in mind. Just because it's honey or maple syrup that are more of those natural sugars doesn't mean they're necessarily better for us. So we still want to keep within that sugar budget, which is that six to nine teaspoons a day. So we're just going to mix our dry and wet ingredients. And I'm just gonna double check our list to make sure I didn't miss anything. But these actually have a lot of just natural sweetness to them all on their own. And similar to the pancakes, you could always top the pancakes or the muffins with, you could put some peanut butter on them, you could put peanut butter in this batter. Um, so if you're a peanut butter person, you could add that flavor in there. Uh, or we've mentioned the fruit that's also a good option. We've got a lot of fruit already in this, which makes it good for us. So now we're gonna put this into our muffin pan, and I have already sprayed this with a cooking spray. Um, so I'm just gonna spoon these in. And as I said, they will rise just a little bit, but they're not gonna rise an abundant amount. So be mindful of that as you're filling your tins. You can fill them a little bit higher than you typically would with a uh, your traditional muffins, I guess is what we'll call those. So thinking about this, we've got some, some oats, which is going to um, give us those whole grains. Uh, oats are whole grain, so that's a great addition. And that's going to help satisfy us for longer in the morning. We're also going to pair that with those nuts that are in this, this uh, muffin. And the nuts will also help to give us those healthy fats and satisfy us for a little bit longer. And your nuts also have protein in them, so you've got some healthy protein. We did have eggs in this, so you still have protein from your eggs. And you've got your fruit. So this is really a good, um, kind of uses all of those different components in the my plate that we talk about that are so good for us. So. So it's almost like a complete meal all on its own. We're just missing those vegetables. Um, vegetables are a little bit hard to get at breakfast. So sometimes we struggle with that a bit, but uh, fruits are a good substitution. We just wanna make sure we get uh, five cups of veg fruits and vegetables a day total. So we're gonna move this over to our oven. So I'm going to set this down grab our muffins we actually have some already in here that are done that look so good and we're going to put our other ones in so we want to make sure that our oven's on 400 degrees and we're going to cook these for about 20 to 25 minutes now i cooked these for 20 minutes and they are very dark um, your oven can depend on that that time uh, that you are cooking those. I'll pull one of these out just so you can see it. But they look really good. Um, they're very tasty. When you cut into the middle of them, you can see some of that apple and some of that banana. So this is a great thing that you can, you can use for breakfast. You could, again, freeze these as well. Um, we just don't have as cool of a way to heat them up as we do with the pancakes, throwing them in the toaster. Uh, so just keep that in mind, uh, but these are a great option for breakfast. We have really tasty breakfast options that are low in sugar, healthy for you, whole grains, um, have that fruit added to them, and are just overall a great way to start your day. So thank you so much for joining me today on At the Table, and we will see you next time.